Well, good morning, church. How are we feeling today? You feeling pretty good? Feeling pretty good? Let me tell you guys something. You look good, you know. You look good. I can't say that about every church, but you know what? You guys look good. Just turn around and just tell somebody they look good. It just feels nice to say it, you know. You look, you look good. Well, hey, thanks so much uh, for coming out today. Uh, like they said, my name is Pastor Stephen. I get to serve, um, really, I, I feel like I got the greatest job in the world. I get to serve here as our youth pastor, and we've got some amazing students. You guys get to see a few on stage from time to time, but, man, there's so many more that just love Jesus, and they're, they're doing the things that you would want students to do. So, man, uh, I'm so honored that I get to serve here uh, in that. But uh, I do want to say thanks for coming uh, specifically to Greenville first. I know in Greenville there's a lot of uh, amazing churches. There's a lot of uh, great things that God is doing in our city. And uh, the fact that you decided to spend your Sunday morning here with us is something that we don't take for granted. And uh, I just want to say this really before we get into the message today. But, you know, uh, as Pastor Josh mentioned, we always have new people coming to our church. I mean, our city's growing, so uh, naturally our churches are growing too. And, and so, you know, you may find yourself in here today. Maybe you're kind of new to church. Maybe you're new to Greenville First. Uh, maybe you feel a little discouraged today, or maybe you just feel like you're all alone in the world. Uh, can I tell you this, man? This is an amazing church, and if you would just look around the room, there are so many just amazing families here that would love to be in your life and would love to just encourage you. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm so thankful for, for so many of you as I just kind of look around the room and, and, and see so many friendly faces. I'm so thankful for you guys, and, and I just want to say if you are looking for a church home, you found it. And so thanks so much for being here today. Church family, can we make some noise once, one more time for our guests today? Just thanks so much for coming, seriously. Awesome. Well, hey, let's jump into our text for today. Does anybody want to take a wild guess what I'm preaching on? <laughs> you figured it out. All right. Hey, let's jump into our text today. It's in uh, the Gospel of Matthew, which is the very first book in the New Testament. And we're going to be jumping in uh, chapter 28, starting in verse 16. This is what it says. It says, The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, meaning Jesus, they worshipped him, but some people doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Before we jump in, let's just take a quick moment and we're going to say a prayer and just ask that the Lord would speak to us through his scriptures this morning. Come on, let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for just being the God that you are. We're so honored and thankful that we get to celebrate you and we get to worship you. Lord, not only through music, not only through giving, but also through the preaching and the hearing of your word. And I just pray today, Lord, over the next few moments that we share together, Lord, that you would speak to us. Lord, that you would speak to me through your word today and let us grow a little closer to you. Let us be changed, set free, and delivered. Let us go home today made new. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, let me, uh, let me, guys, uh, let me ask you guys a question this morning. Uh, have you ever been in a church setting, and maybe, maybe this is you today, and you've just got like questions, you know what I'm saying? Like you're like, okay, I, I wonder why they do that, I wonder what this is about, you know, I, I wonder kind of what's going on here, why don't we sing the songs, why don't we do this, okay? So I, I grew up very, uh, I was a very inquisitive uh, little guy, you know, I had, I had a lot of questions, and I had friends that had questions too, and I'll never forget uh, when I was real little, I invited a, a friend of mine to church. Uh, my mom had this rule to where if you stayed at our house, on Saturday night, that was all cool and everything, but you had to go to church with us the next morning. Anybody have, live in a house like that? If you spend the night, okay, a couple people, all right. So Sunday morning comes along, and I've got this friend with me, and I don't know if this friend can even spell Jesus. I mean, I have no idea. And so the friend comes to church with me, and church service just like this one, and, uh, you know, I thought they had a pretty good time. You know, I even saw them, like, lifting their hands in worship. I'm like, man, look at this. This is amazing, you know. We get in the car, and he's like, man, I, I just don't know. And I'm like, what's going on? He says, well, the preacher never answered my question. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really sorry. Like, I didn't even see you go up and, and, and talk, talk to him. Like, what's going on? He's like, well, during the music, I saw a lot of people had questions. They were raising their hands. He said, I lifted my hand too. Nobody called on me. I've got some questions, okay? And uh, that, re that really did happen. But, but can I tell you this, that if you find yourself in church today, and you've got some questions, you're in a great spot. You're in a great spot. What I love about this church is, is we've got room for people to ask questions. And I, I can't promise you that, uh, actually, I, I, I'm very confident that we don't have all the answers. But what I can promise you is that we'll do everything we can to look in God's word and, and find the answers that you're looking for. And if not, we'll refer you to somebody that's got them, right? But one of the things I had questions about 
growing up as a kid was, was baptisms, you know? Like, what is baptism? Why should we do it? Who can do it? How many times can you get baptized? What's in the water? I just had a lot of questions as a kid. I had a lot of questions about baptism. And, uh, you know, I've actually been baptized uh, about 10 times. <laughs> Uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. Uh, I've been baptized uh, in church, before church, after church. I've been baptized in some pools, uh, some rivers. I think I got baptized in the ocean once. Uh, I didn't know I was being baptized at the time, but my youth pastor just kind of held me down real good. Um, man, I, I've, been, I've been baptized so many times, and uh, this, this is, it's become a problem. It's a problem for me. Because um, when I went to get my, like, certification to be a preacher, you, there's, a, there's a process. you got to fill out some paperwork. There's some interviews, these types of things. So I sent in all my stuff, and I'm like, Jesus, please help me. You know, like, if they, if they only knew what a sinner I was, they might not let me do this, okay? But they, um, so I sent in all my paperwork, and I got a call a couple months later from a, a, a town called Springfield, Missouri. And the reason that's important is our church is a part of a fellowship called the Assemblies of God. And this is, like, the, the national headquarters, Okay, so they're calling me, and they're like, yeah, is this, uh, is this Stephen Bailey? I'm like, uh, yes. They're like, yeah, we're looking over your paperwork, and there's some discrepancies regarding your baptism date. And I was like, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I made it up. I just, I just wrote down a date. I wrote it down because I've been baptized so many times. And uh, the good news is uh, we, we, we got it all straightened out, you know. I explained to him, I said, you know, I've been baptized in rivers and oceans. I even got baptized at the Brownsville Revival. For those of you that were Pentecostal and around in the 90s, they gave me a shirt when I got baptized that said, I'm Satan's worst nightmare. <laughs> it, had a, it had a little Satan that he was hiding behind. I wish I still had that shirt. If, if you have one of those, please, I'd love to see a picture of it. I know a lot of people got them. But uh, anyway, we got it all figured out. They did say that I could be a pastor, but they told me I could only preach to teenagers. So... Um, I'm just kidding. They, they said I can preach to adults too. But today, for real, I do, I do want to talk about baptism, and I, I, and I want to talk about why it's important. So last week, we, uh, it was Resurrection Sunday, right? It was Easter Sunday. We celebrated uh, the fact that Jesus not only died on the cross, but on the third day, he rose again. Uh, man, church was full. We were lifting up the name of Jesus. Wasn't worship last week just amazing? But man, the worship team, production team, so many... Did an amazing job. We had a great word from Pastor Josh. He says, hey, Jesus doesn't want you to just be better. He wants you to be made new. It was an amazing message. If you didn't get a chance to hear it, go back and hear it. Uh, but I, I do have a confession to make about Easter. Uh, second service last week, we did run out of cotton candy. And uh, it's because I think I had three or four bags. I think, you know, I thought we had plenty, and I just kept eating the cotton candy. So I apologize if you didn't get uh, cotton candy last week. But the thing about Easter is, you know, we celebrate uh, Jesus' resurrection on the third day. But you may not realize this, but there was a lot of things that happened uh, between the resurrection and then Jesus, uh, his ascension into heaven. So th th there was some time that went by, and, you know, Jesus reappeared, and he, he shared some moments with his disciples. And in Matthew's gospel, that's the scripture I read earlier, we're going to read it again. Right before Jesus goes back into heaven where he still sits today, sits on the throne... He got his uh, disciples together, and he gave them these really brief instructions, okay? And I believe these instructions, they not only applied to the disciples in Jesus' day, but if you consider yourself a disciple or a Christian or a follower of Jesus, they apply to us today too. So I want to go back and, and read this uh, passage, and we're going we're gonna to jump in. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. It says, The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Can I just pause there for a second? These disciples, man, they've been with Jesus thick and thin. They've seen him do miracles. They saw him crucified on the cross. They saw him come back from the dead. And he's gathering them around one last time to give them some final instructions. And scripture says, all the disciples were around him. They saw him. They worshipped him. But there were some doubters. I'm like, my man, if you cannot believe after this, like this long, I don't want to say you don't have hope, but come on, you got to open your eyes and see what Jesus is doing in your life. Anyway, that always stuck out to me. Verse 18, Jesus then says to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he gives these instructions. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always 
to the very end of the age. In this passage, Jesus gives us three commands and one promise. The first one he says, he says, go and make disciples of all nations. The second command is to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The third command is to teach them to obey everything that he commanded, the, the teachings of Jesus. I don't want you to obey what I have to say. I want you to obey what God's word says. Okay, that's our, that's our goal. And then he gives us this promise. He says, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Here at Greenville First, every single week, we gather for uh, not only Sunday morning services in this room, but we also have uh, Sunday morning services in the building next door for elementary. We've got Sunday morning services in this hallway for early childhood. On Wednesday nights, we've got small groups. We've got services for students. I know many of you are part of small groups. Throughout the year, we do uh, special events and services like Sisterhood and Man Weekend and, and so many other things. And the whole purpose of doing those events, it's really twofold. The first thing is we want to lift up the name of Jesus and worship him. We did that this morning already, so far. But the second thing is our goal is that we make disciples. You probably know this already, but I want to remind you, church is not just a place where we come form holy huddles and we just worship Jesus. That's great. That's awesome. That's the first part. But the second part is this. We are here to reach the lost. Someone told me one time that the church is not a cruise ship. We're a battleship. We are meant to reach the lost. We're meant to reach the city. We say things around here like we are for the one. If you don't know what that is, we've got some signs in the hallway that explain it. But essentially, our goal as a church, our mission from Jesus is not only do we worship him, but it's our job to make disciples. Come on, if you believe it, say amen. amen. That's our first command that Jesus gives us. And then the second thing, which we're talking about today, is he says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In other words, give folks an opportunity to go public with their faith. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in here in just a couple moments. And the third thing is he says, teach them to obey everything I've commanded. And I think the order here that Jesus describes this is really important. You've got to catch it. I think he says, disciple, baptize, and then teach them to obey. Because he's trying to show us, you don't have to be a perfect person to be baptized. I think a lot of times people think, if I can just get my life in order, then I'll come to church. That's actually not how it works at all. You come to Jesus first. You believe in Jesus. Jesus invites you to belong to his church family, to belong to his kingdom. And then you learn for the rest of your life how to obey Jesus. Okay? So you, you believe in Jesus. You belong to Jesus. And then you learn how to live according to his word. Obedience should be something that's immediate. When you get saved, I believe you should say, I'm going to be obedient to Jesus. But I also know that it takes a lifetime to master. So what is baptism exactly? I got a, my, my big idea today, my, it's really straightforward, it's really easy to remember. Baptism is an external sign of an internal change. That's really all it is. Water baptism, it's an external sign of an internal change. It's something that we do on the outside. It's a symbol to represent something that happens internally. And when you look at this baptism tank over here, let me just kind of tell you a little bit about it. Uh, the whole thing is made out of fiberglass, bless God. And we got a vinyl wrap that kind of goes around the front. And the water in there, there's really nothing special about it. It's, uh, it's Greenville City water, and it comes from the water hose. But I can tell you this, we heat it up for you. We want it to be that, like, loop, lukewarm bath, you know. Like, I promise it's warm before we put the teenagers in there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, what are you guys talking about? Uh, we try to get the water just, just, just perfect for you. You know, Carrie Underwood, I don't know if you listen to uh, much country music, but Carrie Underwood had a song a couple years ago where she said, uh, she says, there must have been something in the water. And can I tell you something? I hope not. <laughs> I hope there's nothing in that water. I hope it's just clear and clean. And uh, now, obviously, I know what Carrie Underwood was talking about. She's saying she found, she found Jesus when she got baptized. And I understand that, and I appreciate that. But this water, uh, it's clean. I can promise you that. But the reason that baptism is an external sign of an internal chain, change is really baptism is a symbol of what we talked about last week, which is Jesus' death on the cross and then resurrection. So think about it for a second. When we go into the water, his baptism identifies us, identifies us with his death and burial into the tomb. And then when you come out of the water, you're a new person and you identify with his resurrection from the dead. There's a famous pastor and theologian 
Um, he actually passed away a few years ago, but his name was Eugene Peterson, and he had this to say about baptism and his interpretation from Colossians chapter 2. He says this, he says, Going under the water was a burial of your old life, and coming out of it is a resurrection, God raising you from the dead as he did Jesus. When you were stuck in your old sin-dead life, you were incapable of responding to God, but God brought you out alive right along with Christ. And then he says this, I love this. He says, think of it. All your sins have been forgiven. The slate has been wiped clean. That old arrest warrant has been canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. Church, I don't know about you today, but I am so thankful that when I was far away from Jesus and when I was dead in my sin and when I was trying to figure out on my own way, Jesus didn't just wait for me to come to him. He came running after me and he set me free and he gave me a brand new life. He didn't just make me a better version of myself. It wasn't just Stephen 2.0. It was just something magically happened in my heart. It wasn't magic, actually. That's pretty weird. But God did something amazing in my heart and he made me a brand new person. And if you find yourself here today and you say, hey, that sounds like something that I would want, we're going to give you that opportunity here in just a little bit. But why should I get baptized? Okay, I got three quick reasons for you. The first one is that Jesus was baptized and he wants us to baptize other people. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, we hear the story, we read the story of when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist before he started his ministry on earth. And if Jesus wanted to get baptized, if Jesus thought it was important, I think we should too. Later on in the passage that we read earlier, Matthew 28, he tells us that he wants us to continue to spread his message, making disciples, and doing so by baptizing and being baptized ourselves. The number two reason I think you should get baptized is because you've decided to follow Jesus and you want everybody else to know. You want people to know. Can I tell you something? That make, making the decision to follow Jesus is one of the best decisions you'll ever make in your whole life. When you make that life-changing decision, you want to tell everybody about what Jesus has done for you and about the new hope that you have found in him. You want people to know that God is real. And I wrote this down, and I think it's important to share that our faith in Jesus, although it should be personal, it should not be private. Yeah. Let me say it again. Yeah. Your faith in Jesus, although it's a very personal thing, it's not something that should be private. I heard a, a pastor tell me one time, he says, you know, in the kingdom of God, God does not have any grandchildren. Think about that for a second. In the kingdom of God... He doesn't have any grandchildren. In other words, God's relationship with somebody never goes through somebody else. So just because, and I, I'm not trying to be harsh or mean here, but just because your mom is a Christian and just because your grandma has been a saint her entire life, Jesus wants to have a personal relationship with you. When, when we die and get to heaven, the Lamb's Book of Life is not broken down by family names. It might be alphabetical. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think there's family trees in there and they go, oh, you're connected to so-and-so. No, being a Christian is about having a personal relationship with Jesus. But just because it's personal doesn't mean that it should be private. When you give your life to Jesus, you should want to tell the world about it. You should be so inspired. People ought to know there's something different about you. You know, I used to tell students when I preached, when, you know, be a Christian and be bold in your faith, but don't be weird. I used to say that, you know, you don't have to be weird. Can I tell you something? We're living in a world today where if you are a Christian and you're bold with your faith, it's weird. So I'm, I'm no longer telling people not to be weird because I believe if you've got to make a stand for Jesus, even if somebody looks at you a little weird, it's okay. They looked at him weird too. All right? But when you get saved, when you experience Jesus, it should be a public thing, a public thing. You know, I wrote this down because um, sometimes people tell me, they say, you know, Pastor, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. You know, I'm a very spiritual person. I read my Bible. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And I say, you know what? You're absolutely right. You, by definition, to have a relationship with Jesus, you never have to come and set foot in church. But can I tell you this? Um, I don't have to go home to be married. <laughs> but can I tell you something? It does wonders for my marriage when I come home. It's crazy. It's, it's been amazing for us. Um, it's been great. 
You don't have to go home to be married, but can I say something? It's very helpful for the relationship. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian, but can I tell you something? There's something about being in a room like this, and there's something about when you're hearing the words that we sing today, Lord, that I'm going to build my life, because there's been times where even though I know that song, and even though I'm a pastor, and even though I'm a Christian, there's something about when you're in the church, and you can hear the roar of people behind you singing, I'm going to build my life on the firm foundation that is Jesus, and can I tell you something? It's, it may be encouraging to you, and I hope that it is, but it encourages me. And I love Jesus with my whole heart, and I have for a long time. But can I tell you something? I really don't know how strong of a Christian that I would be if I didn't have men and women and people in this church and pastors who were praying for me and encouraging me. Our faith should be personal, but not private. Thank you. Thank you. Baptism is about going public with your faith. The third reason I believe you should get baptized is because baptism is a powerful symbol we talked about this already, of what Jesus did for us. When we're baptized, we're reminded of his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection. When we go in the water, we're reminded of his death on the cross and his payment for our sins. But when we come out of the water, we're reminded that three days later, come on, he rose again. I know it's not Easter Sunday no more, but truthfully, it's Resurrection Sunday every single week. Come on, every week. We can celebrate the fact that he's not in the grave anymore. He rose again, and he sits on the throne interceding for us. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us this. He says, if you're in Christ, you are a new creation. Every time you ever see uh, any type of advertising or graphic we do for baptisms, uh, we've got shirts, uh, you know, the stuff in the lobby, all that stuff. Anytime you see this, we always put made new on there. And we don't just put made new uh, because we think it looks good. We put made new because of this scripture right here, 2 Corinthians 5.17. If you're in Christ, you're a brand new creation. I love what Pastor Josh said. I keep thinking about it from last week where Jesus doesn't just want to make you better. He wants to make you brand new. I do want to be clear because I know different people come from different faith backgrounds. But getting baptized is important, but it's not what saves you. You don't have to be baptized to, to go to heaven or anything like that. The only thing that can save you is the grace of God through Jesus Christ. Getting baptized is all about telling the world about the change that's already happened in you. You know... When I think about baptism, and I've, uh, I've used this illustration before, um, baptism kind of reminds me of, of a wedding ring, a wedding ring. So years ago, when I was saving up uh, to buy an engagement ring for my wife, Crimson, uh, you know, I, I saved up a, a, as much as I could. And, and uh, let me just tell you something. If you are uh, about to be engaged or, or you think, hey, that might be something I have for me in my future, and this is guys and girls, um, you can't rely on the Pinterest boards anymore. Because I found out girls make Pinterest boards in the seventh grade, and they forget about them. They just forget about them. And so Crimson and I, we were dating, and I'm like, I'll just find her Pinterest board. Like, come on, every girl's got one of these Pinterest boards. So I go on the Pinterest board, and I see, like, the same, like, type of ring, like, over and over and over again. I was like, man, that's the one right there. So I took a screenshot. I went to this guy I knew who's a jeweler, and I was like, this is the one, man. Like, if you can draw this up, like, I'll take it. This is going to be great. And so, I mean, it was like a custom order, you know what I'm saying? I had, I had to put some money down. There was some paperwork involved. And I was really proud. I was really proud. And I went to certain people in Crimson's family, her, her grandma being one of them, and I just said, hey, look, soon and very soon I'm going to propose. You know, I've already got the ring. And she's like, oh, when's the last time you talked to Crimson about what kind of ring she wants? And I was like, never. It's a surprise. Come on. Like, you're not supposed to talk about it. Oh, my gosh. So... So I said, well, this is the ring. And she's like, oh, honey, I think you might want to talk to her, you know. And so I was like, just cut to the chase. Is this what she wants? She's like, no, here's a picture. She sent me this last week. I said, okay, great. So I went to the jeweler, and, and he's like, man, I'm going to have to call some people, you know. And, and so we, we got it all straightened out, you know, and, and Crimson got the ring that, that, she, that she really wanted. Um, but can I, can I tell you this about, uh, about rings? You know, Crimson's got a, a nice ring, you know, and I saved up for it and everything. Uh, my ring right here, uh, it costs 30 cents. I got it off Amazon.com. It's one of those, like, silicone rings. They're made from, like, recycled toothbrushes or something. I don't know. And this thing, um, and I do have, like, a real wedding ring that Crimson gave me on. But I, I don't, you know, it, it makes my finger feel weird. And, and some of you may think, oh, well, you just need to grow up. Maybe so, but I like the silicone ring, okay? But the reason I share that with you is, um, and, and some ladies may disagree with me in the room, but at the end of the day, 
a wedding ring is, is a, a circle that you put on your finger. Okay, some of them are made out of metal, some of them are made out of silicone, some of them have diamonds on it, some people like pearls, some people like emeralds. You can get whatever kind of stone you want, if you, if, even if you want a stone. I know a guy that proposed with a little, with a little string, and bless God, she said yes. She must have really loved it. <laughs> How are you going to propose with an IOU? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. But a wedding ring, there's really nothing to it. But the wedding ring represents something way bigger than that little circle that you wear on your finger. You see, my wedding ring, it represents the relationship that I have with my wife. Years ago, I stood in a room much like this one, and everybody that I knew and uh, all of our friends and family, Pastor Josh and Brittany were there, and, and I, we stood in front of the whole church, and we said, you know, before our friends and family and before God, we're making this commitment that we love each other and we want to live for Jesus the rest of our life. We want to honor each other. And the ring is a continuous reminder of that. You see, when I have the ring on, it doesn't matter if Crimson's next to me or not. The whole world knows everywhere I go about the commitment that I've made to my wife. And baptism is the same way. You know, you can get baptized in the ocean. You can get baptized in a pool. You can get baptized as many times as you want. But I, can I tell you, there's nothing special about this tank. It's, it's water, it's fiberglass, it's vinyl, whatever. But this tank and being baptized today represents something way bigger than yourself. It represents that you've made a commitment, that you say, for the rest of my life, I want to be identified with Jesus Christ. Hey, can I tell you guys a preacher joke real quick? Is that okay? Are you guys good with that? I try to work one in every chance I get. Preacher jokes are like dad jokes, but worse. You know, they're terrible. Okay, so here's my preacher joke, all right? I'm going to work it in. There was a little boy, and his mama really wanted him to get baptized, okay? Really wanted him to get baptized, maybe even pressured him a little bit and say, son, you know, church and baptism's coming up. You got to get baptized. And, and he reluctantly said yes. You know, he wanted to make mom happy, wanted to make mom proud. The day finally came. He gets in the baptism tank, much like this one, and the preacher says, all right, I'm going to baptize you. Dunks him under the water comes out and he says, well, son, did you find Jesus? The little boy goes, no. The preacher says, all right, I'm going to dunk you again. So he puts him into the water, holds him down a little bit longer this time. The boy comes up and he says, well, son, did you find Jesus this time? And the boy looked a little confused and he says, no, pastor, I didn't. The pastor's getting a little frustrated, getting a little irritated. Who put this boy in the baptism tank? Dunks him one more time, holds him down as long as the pastor thinks is legally possible brings him out of the water and he says son did you find Jesus and the little boy scared he says pastor are you sure he fell in right here <laughs> terrible I told you they were bad they were so bad but hey jokes aside if you find yourself today saying hey hey um, preacher all this stuff sounds great but um, I, I don't even fit the minimum requirement to be baptized. Uh, I don't even know that I would call myself a disciple. I don't even know that I would really call myself a Christian. And, you know, I opened up the message today by just saying, hey, if you're feeling discouraged, this is a place where you can feel encouraged. And if you're feeling all alone in the world, man, this is the perfect place uh, to find a family that loves you and, and cares about you. I see all the time, uh, there's a Facebook group here in Greenville. Uh, many of you are, are in there. Uh, but it's the, the group's called All Things Greenville, and I can't tell you how many times people just comment in there and say, I'm just looking for a friend. I'm just looking for somebody that I can spend time with. And, um, and so often I, I just want to comment and I just want to say the church is where it's at, man. The church is where it's at. And if you found yourself in here today, and maybe you feel like that, you say, I, I just feel discouraged, maybe, maybe you feel alone, and you say, man, I, I just need a friend. I just need somebody to come alongside me. Can, can I say something? That Jesus is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I don't know where you find yourself today on your journey with Jesus, but our mission here as a church is to journey with you, no matter where you make your start. We want to journey with you from where you are to where Jesus wants you, be, wants you to be, which I believe is a disciple, baptized, and learning to follow his teachings and his promise to you is this that if you are his disciple and you follow him that he'll be with us to the end of the age that's what he said in Matthew 28 and we believe this as a church that Jesus came down from heaven to earth and he lived a perfect sinless life this is really what we talk about around Christmas time 
and he grew up and he died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day. That's what Easter Sunday is all about, and we believe that. And let me tell you something. If today's your day, if you say, you know what, I want to be made new. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to experience new life in Christ. Can, today can be your day. Today can be the day that you write down as the day that Jesus changed your life forever. If you want salvation from your sins, if you want to live for him, today is the day. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. I'm going to give you an opportunity in just a few moments. Our pastor told us last week, I love it, I'm going to say it again. Jesus doesn't want to make you better. He wants to make you brand new. And today can be the day that you're made brand new. Once again, getting baptized is uh, it's an amazing thing. It's one of the most rewarding things that you can do um, as a Christian. And as a pastor, it's one of the most rewarding things that I get to experience and, and be a part of. When I see people get baptized, even if I don't know them super well, um, sometimes I, I tear up because I know what it truly means. It's another son, it's another daughter that has found their way back home to Jesus. And can I tell you something, as a church family, when people get baptized, and by the way, I think we've got six or seven folks getting baptized today. When people get baptized, we ought to just go absolutely nuts because heaven's throwing a party and we ought to cheer and we, get, we ought to get on our feet. I'm not talking about the master's clap. I'm talking about the Super Bowl scream. You guys know what I'm talking about? We ought to just cheer this place, blow the roof off this place and cheer because it means somebody who was lost has now been found. When we baptize other people, we get to join with Jesus and his entire church all throughout history, all around the world, on every continent, and fulfill the command that he gave to us, which is make disciples, baptize them, teach them to obey, and his promise to us is that he'll always be with us. Come on, church. Wouldn't it be amazing today if there were people in the room that feel lost, that feel defeated, that just feel so discouraged? Wouldn't it be amazing if those people found Jesus today? Wouldn't it be amazing if we could just celebrate them and say, look, the Lord's going to deliver you. He's going to set you free. He's going to make you brand new. Wouldn't that be amazing? Hey, wouldn't it be amazing if we got to just celebrate with people who are getting baptized today? Wouldn't it be amazing when they came out of the water, they just heard the sounds of heaven. They heard their entire church family standing to their feet, celebrating and say, look, another lost person has come home. I don't know about you, but I get excited because I remember what it was like when I was lost. I remember what it was like when I was discouraged. I remember what it was like when I felt like the world forgot about me, and that's when I found Jesus. There was a worship song that came out when I was a, t a teenager, and the line in the song, it's real simple, but it always made, me meant so much to me. And the line said, I called and he answered. I called and he answered. You can call on Jesus today, and I can promise you this, that he'll answer. He'll answer. And today, I've got great news. I believe there's people in the room that are going to be made new, set free, delivered. And we've even got some folks that want to get baptized today. So can we do this, church family? Would you be so kind to, let's just take a couple moments and spend some time in prayer. Would you close your eyes with me today? Bow your heads. If you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor? I know that I need to be made new. I know that I need Jesus in my life. I need forgiveness for my sins. I need to be set free. I need to be delivered. I need Jesus to do a miracle in my heart today. If that's you, and you want to be made new, nobody's looking around, I promise I would never do anything to embarrass you. This is between you and God. But if you're here today and you say, today's the day, I want to be made new, I want to give my life to Jesus, would you do me a favor, would you just wave at me so I can pray for you? Anybody in the room at all today, from the left to the right, I don't want to miss anybody. You say, today's the day, I want to be made new. I want to be made new in Jesus. Maybe you're watching online right now and you say, you know what, I need to give my life to Jesus today. We've got some people that are there in the chat that would love to just pray with you and speak with you. Church family, can we do this? I'm going to say a simple prayer. Would you just repeat it after me? Say, dear Jesus, I want to be made new. I admit that I'm a sinner that desperately needs you. I believe what the Bible says, that you died on the cross for me and rose again. I commit my life to living for you. I don't just want to be better. I want to be made new. Come on, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church family. Can we celebrate today? Can we celebrate? That's awesome. There's a number that we're going to put on the screen uh, here in just a moment. I, I, I don't want to tell you this. If you 
uh, decided that you want to be made new today, or maybe uh, you've come the last couple weeks and you say, you know what, I just need to talk to somebody. Like, I believe in Jesus. I've prayed their prayer. I need to connect to somebody. I need to, con- need to connect with a pastor. You can text made new to this number, and you can do it when you get home today. You can do it right now. But um, our, our pastoral team, we're the only ones that get this. And we just want to connect with you and get you the resources that you need. Uh, whether you're watching uh, online or you're in the room with us, maybe uh, you're, you're listening to this message on our podcast or later on on demand, but you can text Made New to that number, 864-362-0567. We would love to connect with you. And then also, we've got a free resource that we like to give out. It's a book called Following Jesus. It's a just a little book. We have paper copies in the lobby. You can scan that QR code on, the, on your seat back. We've got it available to you online as well. And this book just talks about the fundamentals of following Jesus. We talked about how Jesus wants us to be his disciple and get baptized. And then it says he, Jesus told us to teach people to obey. That's, that book is kind of a starting point for you to do that. So feel free to take one of those. You don't even have to ask for it. Just steal it. Just take it. Just run as fast as you can. I mean, they're free. Like you're not stealing them, all right? But seriously, uh, but, but check that out. Hey, church, it's been so great just sharing with you today. Thanks so much for, for encouraging me, and I hope you've been encouraged.